Okay. Just, okay. Just here. Ah, uh, hello, everyone. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, hi. Um, my name is Shannon Bosch. That's my father over there. Uh, but I'm going to be talking a little bit about a few things. But before I get started, I'll talk a little bit. You can, I'll tell you about me. This is my incredible family. Very happy without them. I would not be here. Um, and this is a little bit more about me. I love reading music. I actually love making PowerPoint presentations. So I hope you like this one. It was a lot of fun to make. And I like social media and coding, which brings me to my first point of sometimes instead of using apps, I draw them. Now, please excuse my drawing. I was just give you a little bit of background. I was probably two hours into scrolling through Instagram <laughs> when I realized that it was kind of cool how each page and only a few buttons that connect the page have kind of consumed lots of hours in my lifetime. So I just draw like the very fundamental pages and that kind of got me thinking of just the basic foundations of all apps that I've kind of used, which brings me to I was kind of drawing some other things and I decided to put those pictures into, present, into PowerPoint and then I hyperlinked the buttons to the buttons which they would go to and then I, this, I kind of discovered how with enough of those rough drafts and with enough hyperlinks you can kind of make a very rough draft of any application that you kind of have ever dreamed of. So moving on, about a few weeks ago I was a helper at a girl code workshop at NUS and it was a really really cool um, experience. I met a lot of new people. We had about 65 girls come and the whole point of it was we're just trying to give them an intro into computer programming, mostly Python. Um, but my part in it was I had from the beginning, I asked them to take something that was in their mind. I feel like that's a very important part of just making anything. So first of all, we had like lots of incredible colorful papers, markers, just letting their creativity run wild. And we just asked them to draw something they were interested in. And that's it. And then after that, we asked to think of something how they could take what they were interested in and use programming actually make something of it. And there was no computers around, we just asked them to draw what they would make. So as you can see here, someone drew like this video game maze, someone else drew like a pet rock app health thing, I think, and just really fun stuff. And not only were they able to draw things that they could make, but they were also able to learn a little bit about the basics of programming using code combat, which is something that I really recommend, it's very fun. And it was just a really cool time. And throughout the whole experience, I was thinking of all of these girls and what they were making, and I kind of had a little bit of spark of creativity as well. So when I got home that night, I drew this, and it's very basic. But I am a huge bookworm, you could say, so I love Percy Jackson, so I'm just, yeah. So this app was pretty much my idea of having character images, and then when you pressed, when fans could press like a button, you would up the vote for the person you wanted to go on a specific quest. And so I took this idea and I decided it would be really cool if I used just the programming coding skills that I know and actually tried to take this drawing, this prototype, and actually make it into something usable that I could share with other people. So this is some initial HTML that I did in a website, very basic. I had like the title, some buttons, I put some images in the buttons, and then I just put random numbers next to the buttons just to kind of give myself an idea of what I wanted it to look like. But of course, I couldn't do as much as I wanted with HTML, so then I decided to add view, which is kind of the title, I'm in love with the shape of view, which is the wordplay. But <laughs> anyways, so I created that, and then I added the element property, and then I referenced the elements that I wanted to enhance, as you can see here, with the arrow. And then I decided to add counter. So this would be kind of my form of what I wanted to do to change the ability of my buttons to actually function, which is mainly what I wanted to focus on. So I decided to replace the numbers next to my buttons with counter into curly braces. And I just came up with a very random number, 22. But as cool as it was, there was nothing that happened after I pushed my button. So 
so I decided to add add click inside my button element and that way it would reference and whenever I click the button the number would go up so I was getting closer but it was not quite there yet so I decided to add even more counts, counters for my different buttons to reference the different counters. So I had one, two, and three, as you can see here. And this is pretty much what I wanted. And it's, I think, using what I had, I was just very, very happy with it. And then I realized I didn't need actually, I didn't need the button element, so I just put all my stuff into the image element, as you can see here. But once I had that, I, I was able to actually take what I had and share with other people. And was, I was able to actually take my first image of my very prototype on a note little card. And I was able to also show people my app and say, this is how I got from here to here. And so I showed it to a few people and I got incredible feedback about like reset buttons for the voting, if it would be possible to see who's leading in the voting and all that. But throughout this whole process, I just thought it was really cool how if you can tell someone that they can make whatever they imagine just by drawing something on a piece of paper, that's an incredible amount of power. And no matter if you're really great at coding or if you have a little bit of coding experience or not at all, I think that it's important to tell people that no matter kind of where they're at, if they can do enough of those papers and if they can show enough people what they're planning to do, some way they can achieve what they were intending to achieve. So that's all. I hope you learned something or it was entertaining for you. Uh, my name is Shannon. I'm your future intern. <laughs> and uh, live long and prosper. Thank you. Uh, my father here. All right, that's going to be hard to follow, but um, I'll try and be half as much cute, and we'll see how it goes. Who, who am I kidding? I've got no prayer. Okay, let's see. All right, so um, when Shannon was going to do that, I thought it would be good to maybe share the, the other side of things that, that I run into. So I'm a university professor, and I've taught a lot of courses where we prototype designs and come up with new ideas. Uh, I lead a development team that's always trying to move sort of larger applications forward. And one of the things that I really want to encourage people is exactly that. Just go draw on a piece of paper. In fact, draw me two versions, go show it to five people, and then come back and tell me why you like version one instead of version two. That's much more productive usually than, hey, prof, I have an opinion. This is better. Let's, let's change it. Um, but when you do that, you do get some code that um, is it's, it's very variable. It's very different than what I might design, and it's very different from what I would expect my, uh, my software engineers to design. So what I want to do is walk through why I like Vue as well. I've done a lot of Angular, I've done a lot of React, and I too am in love with the shape of Vue. Uh, it's, it's just been easier for me to do a lot of things than I was used to. So I'm going to walk you through sort of what it's like for me trying to refactor an app. It's a wonderful app. I love it, Shannon. It's exactly what it was supposed to be. Uh, but now I'm going to try and make it a little bit more uh, software engineering, if you will. So typically what we do as uh, software engineers, as architects, as computer scientists, we make things more and more complex until no one else can understand it. <laughs> and then they have to pay us more money. Uh, because no, no one year, two year out of university person can do it. You know what I mean, we do this. We have our own reasons, but all they need to know is only we can understand it. So first of all, I want to get that JavaScript out of my HTML page, and I'm going to take all the JavaScript that was here. Shannon did a nice one page app, about 50 lines of code, worked just fine. Um, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put it over in main.js, uh, mainly so that I have my, my JavaScript in one place, and so I can go do some test driven uh, development with it. Uh, then I'm actually going to go ahead and just export uh, the, the default app. This is just, I'm just trying to show you what I do very quickly when I'm trying to get my hands around designs and I don't know what I don't know yet. So I'm just going to export that. And then over here in the HTML page, I've replaced where uh, Shannon had all of her, her stuff inside the JavaScript tags. I've replaced it with a reference to main.js. Everybody got that? Cool. Show of hands. Who in here has played with Vue before? Who in here has never written any Vue code? Excellent. Oh, okay, excellent. So you guys will, 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 will enjoy this, I hope. All right, so um, everything else is, is the same as Shannon's, except I replaced that. 
Um, now I want to go off and I want to do test-driven development. So I have a lot of engineers ask me why do I bother writing tests after the app is already written. And I always tell them because I'm usually going to want to change stuff. I'm going to do this fancy thing called refactoring. And when I start changing things, I'm going to break stuff. And I want to know when I broke something. Because if I don't know that I broke something, then I'm afraid to change something because I won't know if I broke anything. And uh, if you've done a lot of, worked on a lot of big projects, this makes a lot of sense to you. So I'm going to go write some tests uh, just to sort of then I'll sort of show you how I start writing the test first and then how I re-architect the design. Uh, so just a simple uh, you know, test, I'm going to import view, I'm going to import the code, the JavaScript from main. I'm going to describe one test, and here I'm just going to start with a failing test, expect one to equal two, one's not going to equal two, and so I'm going to get a failing test. Uh, depending on what framework you use, but in this environment I'll have a nice place that I can go down and, and see that, hey, I expected the value to be two, but I received one, of course that's wrong. Uh, so we always make our tests fail first for the main reason that we want to make sure our test works. If our test never fails, it's not really a test. It's just you feeling like you did something that you didn't do. So now we're going to change the 2 to a 1, and now all of our tests fail. I love all green. Uh, green is a color you, love to, you, you learn to love if you do a lot of unit testing, uh, because every time it's green, it's like, yes! Awesome, I accomplished something, time to go get a coffee, time to uh, you know, go, go do whatever I do to take a break before I dive right back in. All right, so that works. So now we're going to try and make it a little bit more real. We're going to go expect app.counter1, uh, the counter that Shannon uh, uh, created. We're going to expect it to uh, equal 1. Um, but we expected 1 and we got 0 because it, start, it turns out that the counter starts with 0. So I changed that to 0 and now it's passing. So now at this point, if I ever break counter one or I change the default for counter one, my test will fail. And I'll be reminded to do that. Uh, if you have a hundred features in your app, which happens very quickly, that there's a hundred things that could go wrong, it's nice having these little tests because you, you, you end up break, you don't know which one of the hundred things you're going to randomly break. All right. And so then I said, let's just go check all of her counters because she had four of them, make them all equal to zero. Yay. All tests are passing. All right, so let's say, let's go add something new. All right, so I wanted to share a little bit about Vue, so I decided to add one more thing that wasn't in Shannon's design. This is going to be called um, counter total. And what counter total is supposed to do, it's just supposed to add up all the counters, all the votes for the four different characters. All right, so I say make app counter total equal zero, and I get an error because there's nothing called counter total. It doesn't exist uh, in the JavaScript code. It's undefined. So first we need to fix that. So we go back to view where we had our data, and I'm just going to add a new property here, counter total in my object, make it 99. And now um, I'm still failing. Oh, that's cut off the slide. Instead of zero, now I'm getting 99. So I go change it to zero. My zeros match all my tests are passing. Right? I feel like a magician, you know, all green. OK. Uh, so then what we want to do is we want to figure out uh, how are we going to be tracking when any of the counters actually change if, um, if the total counter is changing. And what I noticed very quickly when I got to this point that if I was running the app, I was getting six. I was like, where's the six coming from? Well, one of the things, if you have a whole lot of tests and they're all like incrementing your counters or setting values, if you don't reset your starting values to zero before every test, you'll end up with these type of errors. So typically what we do is we reset our state before we run our tests, and we do that before every test so we have a deterministic uh, type of result. Um, so here are my counters, uh, you know, we're all supposed to be uh, zero. And so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to increment my counters uh, this time. And so what I'm going to do is call app counter plus plus, which is the same code that uh, Shannon's code was doing when she pressed the button. And so I should be able to say, hey, counter total should be zero. When I increment one counter, the counter total should equal one. And it doesn't. Because I've not written the logic yet that adds up all the separate counters and puts them into counter total. So I can figure out how to watch the different counter values and go add things up whenever anything changes. But one of the nice things about Vue that um, I, I just found out accidentally when, uh, when messing around with it is you just get this built-in thing called computed. So rather than just your data that stores everything, you can create a computed value. And 
and then for that same variable name, give it a function. And every time the things that make up this function change, they're all watched, this thing gets re-executed, and you have a new value for computed. All right, so I didn't really have to write any code other than to say, when I ask for counter total, I want the result of counter one plus counter two plus counter three plus counter four, these four counters. Make sense? All right, awesome, so I've computed. So no more of that me having to write the code to um, just you know, uh, manually add up things and keep track of them when they change. Vue's gonna do all that for me. All right, so that's fun. All right, and then um, now I come in here and before I had this code here where I'm, I'm adding one to a counter, then another, then another, then another, and I, now I've got my counter total. I wanna make sure it equals four, but before I make the test pass, I'm going to make it fail. So I put one in there, it says I got one, I expected four, good, that's what you were supposed to do, test, I, I change it to four, all green, yay, okay, all right. Um, people who do unit testing for a living, they're like, oh my gosh, is he, is he really going through this step by step? But if you don't do testing, this is, this is actually what it looks like. It goes pretty fast and it's make it fail, make it pass, make it fail, make it pass. All right, um, now that we've got this counter total, not only can we use it in our JavaScript code, uh, since we're doing view, we can go back into our HTML and anywhere we want, we can stick in this um, computed value. All right, and so what I've done here is I've just made another header tag, said counter total equals votes, and now whatever the total of all the counters are, that's gonna be our number of votes across all the characters. All right, now incrementing counter. So rather than just uh, hard coding the counter plus plus inside the HTML, I want to pull that out into a method. So I'm going to call the method uh, increment counter. It doesn't exist initially, so I get this nice error. It tells me what to go do next, which is go create a new method. And so in the right below computed, I've added another section. View lets you add things called methods, which are exactly what you think they are. They're methods that you then are going to use that you can call from other methods or from your HTML. All right. Now the other thing is, a lot of you in here, if you're if you're super coders, you're used to changing nine things at once. I do this all the time. Over the years, though, I have learned. If I try and change six things at once, it is exhausting to me. I'm having to keep track of it. I have a little notepad to my right where I'm saying, don't forget to do this, this, this. You broke these five things. Check them off when you're done. Uh, I still do that at times when I'm just hacking around trying to get things done. But there is something that makes it more fun if you go step by step. Fix one thing at a time, add one test, or break it, fix it. So we make our function. And then we're going to go in. Our function fails. Now it's always returning zero. Uh, we're going to come in and say, hey, when we, when we run this, we actually want to increment counter one. All tests are passing. Yay. Time to, time to break something again. Okay. All right. Uh, also now up here, instead of doing counter, plus, counter one plus plus in the HTML, I've replaced that with this increment counter function. All right. Same thing. All right. Now about this time, I'm starting to realize that, you know what? Uh, I don't want to have four different counters. I'm going to go have to re re replace. I'm going to have to go rewrite that increment counter method four times if I write, write a separate increment counter, you know, uh, function for every single counter. So I decided right now it's time to do some heavy-duty refactoring. So instead of having individual variables for my counters, I'm going to go off and I'm going to create something called counters, plural, and it's just going to have to start off being an array of, you know, uh, four zeros. So these are going to be my counters at index 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to use that to replace the, the counter variables. All right, so here it is in my data. I add it right here. The moment I stop typing for a second, my environment notices that it's time to run my tests again. They run it, and I see all green. All right, and there's something, something like that. Sometimes I find I'm trying to type just fast enough so, because I know as soon as I stop, it's going to run my tests, and they're going to fail again. But if I get that last bracket written, uh, it'll, it'll be all green. Okay, all right, and then uh, from there, let's just keep making it more complex, right? So it's harder for HR to uh, hire someone to uh, work on this app. Uh, so now instead of calling counter one and counter two, I'm gonna replace the counter one with counters and index zero, the first um, you know, number that's in that JavaScript array. All right, now 
This is uh, one of the places where when I was playing with Vue, I came across a newbie error. Uh, you know, I ran into the issue. I said, what in the world is that? Why is this not working? I did like you did. I went over to Google, pasted the error into Google, and then Google led me to this page on the documents. Hey, newbie, here's what you guys don't realize how things work. A uh, whole lot of code, but the main thing to, to say is Vue's going to do its best to update things whenever your data changes, except if it's in an array. It's not going to look inside your arrays at every single indexed item. Uh, I actually got around this issue at one point by when it wasn't updating. I said, you know what's easy to do? I'll just add something to my array, and then I'll pop it off. So in my initial view code when I was playing around, it was like push one, pop one, or push one, pop, you know, nothing. Uh, and then I finally got around to figuring out what I was doing. And, and the main thing is, is we're just going to use this array splice rather than this um, array zero equals value. And that's going to do enough of a mutation that Vue will notice it, and then they'll, they'll recalculate all of our values. All right, so that's what this is. We've changed increment counter from just being this dot counter zero plus plus to actually being um, find the new value and then go splice it in uh, to the array. And the main reason we're just doing it the harder way this way is so we get the uh, responsiveness from, from Vue. All right, well, all that's working pretty well, except um, when I start switching to this, all my code is breaking. It just seems like that would be just fine, but I just changed my increment counter button. It's no longer you know, working the right way. I get some failing tests, uh, so I go off and I just start changing a lot of it, things. I'll jump ahead a little bit here since I uh, um, want to leave a little bit of time for questions. Uh, but eventually, we have all of our counters and everything's passing again, all right? And then what I want to do for finding my total is I don't want to add up counter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I came in here and I said, you know what, I'm just going to reduce this list of counters by adding them all together, accumulating them, and then returning that as my counter total. Uh, if you've never got around to learning how map and reduce work in JavaScript, I highly recommend you do it. They're awesome. They're powerful. It, it, and once you do it, you'll be able to read things like this. This pops up more and more in people's code. Uh, they like using reduce, and if you're not used to what reduce is doing, it'll, at least it makes a lot of my students tilt their head sideways and, and squint a good bit. All right. Um, and so now we just we don't really want all, all these counters anymore. What we'd like to do is that same increment counter, but we'd like it to work for all of these. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pass an index in uh, to our counter. So we're going to start replacing increment counter with increment the zero counter, the first counter, the second counter, the third counter, and that's going to end up making all of our tests pass again. All right. And so this is just an example of how I do. Uh, a lot of refactoring in Vue, going from things that are a lot of duplicate code and trying to replace them with uh, things that are just a, a little bit uh, more efficient. So now on increment counter, this is where we pass in the index we want to update, and this is how we're actually updating the values. This dot counters of whatever our index is, add one to it, essentially. <coughs> all right, and um, jump ahead a little bit here. So I had all that working. Next thing in our HTML, we're going to use increment counter. And we have to replace all these counter plus pluses with this increment counter magic. And that's what we're going to do. Get our counters working. Get our increment counter. Show the counter that's in the array. And after we do that, our view code's a lot simpler. It's small. It's literally the whole thing to make the app work. All that stuff showed you. It ends up just being about 18 lines of uh, uncommented code. We just have our counters. We just have the counter total, which adds up the, the value of the counters to give us our votes. And then we just have this increment counter value that as long as you pass it the index, it will update the correct counter. All right. So at that point, I'm like, it's a good place to stop. That feels good. My code is, uh, is nice and dry. So then I go look at my HTML and I go, oh, you know what? That looks like a lot of duplicate code as well. That all looks the same. The only thing different is the URLs to the images. Hey. Maybe if I could pull those URLs out, I could put those URLs in an array and then make all these images look a little bit more similar. And so then if I do that, I can just create one loop. So this is my last view thing I'll show you. There's this V4, and you can do for X in URLs. But if you, if you wrap that in parentheses and do comma index, you can get both the current item as the URLs as you're looping through them, and you can get the index. The 0, the 1, the 2, the 3. And this is my quick hack. That's how I get the number, the, the index that I want to use for incrementing counters. 
All right, and so now I've got down to my nice 20, it's actually 20 lines, I think, if you take out the spaces, but of dry HTML code, and I've got my dry JavaScript code. And, and dry generally means do not repeat yourself. And if you can ever keep from repeating yourself, it will reduce your bugs over time. Uh, trust me or don't trust me, that's fine. But what will happen is if you don't reduce your duplicate code, one day you'll have to change something. You'll change it in one place, you won't change it in the other, and you'll leave a bug behind. Right? Or somebody will be designing a client to work with your code and they'll look at one copy and they won't notice that the other copy is done a little bit differently. All right, um, so that's why going through all this, now I have some dry code. It feels much more engineering uh, appropriate for me. And I know if I come back to this in six months after I've forgotten what it does, I'll be able to glance at that code, just have a few lines of code and remember what was going on. And with that, I'm gonna invite Shannon back up for questions. Thank you. Coming up. <clears throat> Any questions? Drawing, prototyping, inspiring the women of tomorrow, refactoring. Yes. Is there like a, a specific framework, testing framework for you? Did you recommend I like Jest. Jest just seems to work. Uh, I like, so Jest is what the Facebook guys have built into React. It works mostly out of the box with Vue. I haven't played enough with the Vue specific ones yet. And I like Jest because I can do code coverage very easily. And uh, sometimes I like to just look at a code base and go, how covered is it? Is it 10% or is it 50%? So, um, and Jest works well for my command line. It works really well from this code sandbox.io environment without me doing anything. So uh, it could be it's like by path of least resistance, but it's also just done most of the things I wanted to do. My understanding is, I'm not very familiar with it, but before you could use Enzyme with Jest? I've not really looked up, you know, it's, it's very basic. The very basic stuff there, you know, is, is pretty much what I'm using, using yeah. Any other questions? All right, excellent. You guys are on schedule. Excellent. Next speaker.